Hello to you all. Very welcome on the uh, Aperio conference from 2021. Uh, for you, we have um, Duncan McGrewer from the University of Edinburgh. He is going to introduce himself. But before uh, he does that, uh, we have to um, explain some things. So please uh, mute yourself. You already did. If you want to see the closed captioning, you can click the link that's in the chat um, to, to view it. Uh, and we are trying to make it work in another way. If you have any questions, don't use the chat, but use the shared notes because they are used uh, later on. If you uh, accidentally post something into the uh, public chat, I will add them to the shared notes. The, um, the session is being recorded and um, uh, Duncan told me that he has a lot of time for your answers <laughs> left. So, um, Duncan, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for that, Inga. Um, so, good afternoon, everyone. Yes, thank you for uh, joining me here. Uh, my name is Duncan McGrewer. Um, I work at the University of Edinburgh. I'm the portal services manager there. So what this encompasses is looking after our central U portal installation, locally called MyEd, um, and a couple of other associated services. So notification service known as FISAN in Aperio language, uh, and also our SMS text messaging service that enables us to, to provide campus-wide comms. And one of the things, obviously, that everyone's aware has happened in the last year um the pandemic and what it led me to think about is how we decide who sets communications and particularly in this case study i'm going to present uh within our within our portal um so obviously what i'm going to go through is the university of edinburgh's journey but what would be really good to hear about maybe in the last sort of 10 or so minutes is everyone else wants to share their their thoughts and feelings on, on what i'm about to say um because you know i think the sharing of experience in those things just helps us uh, move forward uh, and, and helps to do things very effectively. Um, if you want to read more about me and anything I'm doing, then a link to my profile is available just on this slide. Um, so as I mentioned, I'd like to talk a little bit about how we decided who is allowed to send messaging through our central U portal. Um, but taking a step back from there, what, what is governance? What is digital governance and why do we need it? Um, I'll then look at the case study of how we, we use these principles to move through in our, in our U portal instance. Um, but then a few thoughts on what we might do if we haven't got ideal governance uh, at the end of things. So just a little bit of a word association to start with for everybody. Um, thinking about governance and what comes to your mind when you hear the word governance, particularly in the digital field. Um, so have a think about that one and get your get your thoughts together. When I ran this um, this this idea past a few people internally, the types of things they said were that governance is slow and inflexible, and it just reacts to bad things happening, and it's remote, and nobody knows who it is. It's anonymous and it's rigid and it never changes. But what these actually are are examples of bad governance. So if you think of bad governance, these are the types of things you you would think about. But I'm here to make a pitch and say that governance can be a really, really good and effective thing. That's, that's none of these things. It's quick and it enables things. It's an enabler of things to happen. But I must confess that when I think of the word governance, what I think of, what comes immediately to my mind, is this gentleman. Now, if you have seen the Shawshank Redemption, you will recognize Warden Norton here at a, at a, at a pinch. Um, if you've not seen the Shawshank Redemption, then please do. It's probably one of the greatest pieces of cinema of all time, so take some time out your, your schedule. But if you know this gentleman, you'll know he's not necessarily a positive role model for government. But some of the characteristics he certainly displays are very centralized decision making. So he's the, the head of a prison. Um, he's rather inflexible. So Nothing gets past our warden nor in it, it must be said. You could, I mean, pure devil's advocate, you could say it's efficient, but there's certainly a large human cost to the types of decisions that the, the good warden here is taking. But let's not think negatively about governance. This is this is one way of governing things, is, is the warden. But actually, a more positive role model for, for governance, deciding about things, might actually be um, the, the internet. So here's W3C they uh, set their standards and, and govern how the internet works. Um, these are open standards and they deal with a huge amount, this huge multiplicity and diversity of, of what websites are for and, and goals. Um, I hope I'm you know, speaking along with you when I say that um, 
you know, that no one really feels constrained by the internet. There's a huge amount of things that's possible to do there. Um, so obviously they display a great deal of flexibility about the way they govern things there. And they do set standards that allow everyone to feel safe or safer when they use the internet. So standards are maintained. And also people not can understand about web browsing. This is from the highest technical developer down to, you know, my mum when using the internet can understand what things mean and understand what's being displayed on the, on the screen. So what is digital governance then? So these are examples of governance. What is this thing? Um, a pitch for this book, if you are embracing digital governance and you think you might want some in your organization, get this. It's called Managing Chaos by Lisa, I think, Welchman. Could be Welchman, forgive me or not. But actually what digital governance is here, it's establishing a framework for accountability. So it's deciding who can do things in your organization. And what actually, what, what might that mean then? Deciding who can do things? It's answering questions like, who's responsible for what? Who decides what the site is for? Who decides what the color of the website is? Who decides on the branding? And who manages the disagreement when those things occur? So if there is disagreement about what the site is for, or disagreement about how branding should be represented on the website, who gets the final say? And actually, what it's trying to do is enable decision making. So trying to cut through some argument taking place between two or three interested parties, enabling you to just get on with your, with your work. Um, no decision is sometimes as bad as is, is sometimes better than bad ones, actually, because a bad decision about who, you know, if there's if there's no decision about who can make a decision, um, what you get is silos and you get people arguing and you get um, you know, divisions between IT and marketing and all the different groups that are involved. Um, or you end up with a website that's graphically diverse. You know, it's like a like a Christmas tree with with massive things thrown onto it. Or you get an incongruent information architecture. You get a website that no one can use. But if one person's unable to make a decision about it, at least they're accountable for that decision. Whereas if you just spread it out amongst the organization, who can say? Who can say who's to blame for things? So our digital governance here then will not define a content strategy. It's not gonna say what the content strategy is, but it says who will do it. Here's one of those other things that's said often about governance is that all governance slows things down and definitely bad governance does. Like if the governance doesn't dictate that it's a person or at least a job role or a shared role that enables these decisions, nothing's gonna happen, nothing's gonna move forward effectively. And actually no governance tends to lead to kind of a, a wild west of things being done and no standards adhered to. Um, if you, you know, if you can't set standards for people to 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 meet, then how can you blame them when they don't meet those standards when they're not communicated in the, in an organisation? And in terms of, you know, th this governance, then if it's right and it brings clarity to the accountability, your risk goes down because your site's going to be accessible. You can tell everyone it must be accessible and it must be available and it must have, you know, it's, it, adhering to legal principles of wherever you're based. And the quality goes up because it's all accessible and it's all, you know, and it's and it's easy to do. It's easy to understand who does what. Um, and in a large organization, so University of Edinburgh is big and it's complex. And in a large organization like that, you know, where you're working across multiple channels, the website, the portal, social media, mobile, design, IA, graphics, um, content, analytics. Um, I feel like I should have maybe tried to make all that, that rhyme somehow. But when you're dealing with all those things, you need to distribute the way it's it's produced because otherwise it's one huge central team that's massively expensive and it doesn't bring in the type the voice of those individual areas of an organization that's, that's necessary in this in, in the modern world really and in terms of those policies and standards how do we set them how do we communicate them this is what i'm here to say there's there's a way to do this but which model is best there's no one model that that, that dic dictates this. Um, it depends on the size, the complexity of your organization, more central or more decentralized. It's all about deciding and bringing clarity to people when they have to ask these questions. So that's what we're that's what we're talking about. The one example I want to bring to you today then is MyEd. So this is our installation of uPortal. And what you see here in that large blue alert box is communications, communications about our response to the coronavirus, is campus open? What can you do? What what are the expectations around your staff job role or your students in terms of, of study? And here's the question, who should decide what goes in that box? Not what should go in that box, because that's too big a question. You couldn't fulfill a list of that anyway. You know, it would be, you, you can't make an inexhaustive list looking into the future. Um, if you can do that, then, then tell me, you predict the lottery numbers, you know? 
But in terms of who is enabled to put the, the information in this box, who has the overview of, of a campus communication strategy, that's what we need to decide at this point. I want to just quickly look though at the, the options that are available in our installation in terms of making messaging uh, on a campus-wide level. So we have one that's enabled by our FISAN integrations. This is a notification service that enables us to put emergency notifications up there. Very high priority, very visible. Um, they've got this, this bootstrap styling of red, and it's it's very important. It's basically at the top of all our pages, but it's one single message. This can only be done one thing. There's only one thing that can go in there. We also have this, the example of the, the blue box. This is what we're running right now. Still high priority, still very visible to everyone that's using the system. It displays at the top of the home page within our U portal, but once you move on to other areas, it does it does go away. A couple of styling options, but practically there's only room for two messages in there. So in terms of usability, to add multiple messaging in there, it just doesn't work. It becomes lost in the noise. We again have notifications that are running in the top right-hand corner of our, of our uh, U portal instance. These are a slightly lower priority in terms of you know these these banner messages, but still seen by people. There's no current maximum, so you could have multiple items in there, and they can be targeted specifically. So unlike these banner ones that display ac across our campus more or less, these can be targeted to areas of our organisation or to lists of users in a much more sort of um, targeted and personal way. Um, and we also have an announcements portlet within our U portal. Um, this is for much lower priority items because they're seen much less. Some of it's opt-in, some of it's mandatory, but it gives you an, you know, a, 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 an insight into some of the things we're, we're doing. So in terms of these challenges, in terms of information about what people should be doing at the university, um, we've got some, some challenges there. So which option's best at, at which time? So um, the portal has very high traffic. It's got great visibility amongst our, our, our campus. Uh, as you saw there, some of the options have got limited availability. So there needs to be an issue of, of priority in amongst there. So we, we're deciding here what's the appropriate and priority messaging within the, the portal. And who should initiate it? Because I, I don't think I should. I don't think I as portal services, you know, the, the, the software uh, development manager, I don't think I should be deciding on communication message. It doesn't make sense. I should be the gatekeeper there. We need someone, again, who has the appropriate organizational view of communication strategy. So what we did is we went to our governance mechanisms at the university and made this agreement. Only approved staff should be authorized to do that messaging, to decide what goes there. And within the University of Edinburgh, we kind of have a, a split amongst the people that should be doing this. So one is communications and marketing. This is our central internal communications and, and external marketing group. Um, they have a central place in our crisis communications plan. This is across those channels, so across web, across social, text messaging, and the portal. So they are going to put together a communications plan that's coherent across all of those channels. So it makes sense that they should dictate those boxes. And anyone who wants to do campus-wide messaging should really be talking to those experts in terms of planning, execution, measurement, making sure it fits in with everything else. We also said that people within our information services, this is our computing group, should be able to do it as well, particularly for outages, outages and planned outage messaging um, across our high priority systems. Now, those are as agreed but across our business. So we don't decide what's priority or, or our business people do. Um, along with those high priority systems, those access through our U portal as well. So again, we're trying to take a, like a, like a user experience view of this thing and stop people accessing systems that aren't going to work anyway. So we're cutting them off and we're, we're stopping their journey and saying, please wait for this. It's going to be off for this amount of time. And we also have an agreed uh, process with our uh, a major incident process, which is dictated by again by our central computing support. Um, and there's a, a major incident commander who can dictate whether this is important enough to have a message placed for across campus communications, or where there's just a smaller user group that should be interested in it. So we made a decision then so that only a limited set of people could uh, add that information in so that it is coherent, so that it's delivered at the right time. We didn't wait until there was another crisis before deciding to put this in. We've been proactive and said, look, only those people should be able to do it. They are the gatekeepers of this process. 
don't email me saying that this is a, a side case that should maybe be allowed. And then an argument breaks out in an email chain while we are trying to do crisis things. So we're responding to something that is by its nature urgent. That is not the time to be deciding who should be able to set this messaging. The time to do is now and decide who is enabled to do it and make sure that processes are there so that comms are easy between those groups. So that there's a working relationship so that people can, can get those things done before the crisis hits. But if you don't have mechanisms at your institution that enable you to do that, what, what can you do? So if things are not working perhaps as they should, what's the what's the next thing? Um, again, I refer to the Managing Chaos book. They've got some, some suggestions of what to do, I'm really glad to say. Um, the first is to get a, a steering committee. So this is the kind of highest level without huge proper governance. Um, it's a group of senior people, so senior resources in the terms, um, that steer direction of what's happening. So they set strategy for what's happening in your, your areas. Um, they ensure that you know that strategy meets business objectives. So they understand the business well, they're trying to set what should be done going forward, and everyone can work to adhere to that. So at least there's some idea, some, some destination of where we're trying to be. Uh, even if the tactical elements are not being set by that group, those, those on the ground, what, who is able to do the, exactly this. At least there's an idea of going forward what, what could be. Um, what else could be set up? A centre of excellence. So this is a group of, uh, you know, domain experts, a hub of people who know what they're talking about. Um, imagining a, a kind of community session, perhaps, that get together once in a while, um, uh, that can, uh, pardon me, that a group of experts who can advise on what's, what's going forward. Um, again, if a group of experts are coming together and, and providing some guidance, what you're not going to get there is 100% compliance with, with what's being suggested. But 80% compliance is better than none, particularly when it comes to those legal principles, the accessibility, the, the data privacy things that, you know, your organization is going to have a real impact if, if they're not being adhered to. And lastly, I should say, this digital community of practice. So this is our community session. It's people getting together once in a while and allows you to kind of align those individual tactical bits that are trying to actually make things better for each area, um, for the web, for social media, for the portal. So it's people getting together and just seeing how it all acts together. Um, they run pilots. It's a forum for people to get together and talk. They can provide training and awareness of trends and things that they've discovered in their own um, services. Another thing this group can do is demonstrate a, a kind of unified approach um, that they can take to management and say, look, we need better governance. We need something better than this that enables us to, to, to start setting higher level strategies, to start setting umbrella things that enable governance to work just, just smarter. Um, demonstrating unified approaches makes me rather in mind of, you know, Angel Rass on the barricades at the end of, of, of Les Miserables, you know, putting it to, to the, the top levels that we should be, should be getting done. Um, and there's, there's something really nice about that of people who kind of know what they're talking about in an area, getting together, sharing experiences and enabling these, these things to come. So in this example, I took this to our community of practice, this, this idea that we can set, you know, who's able to make these decisions. And a lot of people are, are very welcome to the idea, but it's not easy. It's not always easy to put past, um, and, you know, a senior manager that there should be someone in place to make those decisions about site branding, the image that sits at the top, those items that again and again come up and we see people clashing about. But actually, if one person were unable to make that decision, it would cut down decision making drastically. So I've seen websites that have taken four, five, six months to decide on the image that sits at the top, not even something that I would consider strategically important, like an information architecture. Just an image can take many months to agree upon because there's no governance about who can make that decision. If there's one person, again, or one job role that can make those 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 picks, then we can move forward very, very quickly. And again, in this okay. case, Oh, hi. You have 10. <laughs> yeah, you, you, it was a bit difficult to come uh, in between. Uh, you have 10 minutes left. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Inga. Thanks for it. That's totally fine. Sorry. <laughs> no, please. Um, yeah, so that enabling that governance before things get going is a, is a great way of getting decisions made quickly. And as I kind of promised you, Inga, I was going to leave time for questions and discussion. I promised I was going to do it. Um, <laughs> So does anyone have want to share something from their own experience or does anyone have any questions about what we did at the University of Edinburgh that I can uh, clarify anything I said that didn't make sense? I don't know if we're able to do that just in the chat or if anyone 
can just turn on the microphone. I don't know quite how we're set up for this. Yeah, you, you can use your microphone or you can uh, use the shared notes to uh, ask the questions. I'm really happy to go over any section of that again, if anyone wants to see it in a bit more detail or hear a little bit more about what we, we use them for. Oh, I see, I see shared notes now. Oh. And strange that I can see people typing along with their names. This is this is next level. But you have to wait till they're ready to see the question. <laughs> Don't worry about spelling in this in this zone, people. It's fine. <laughs> Speed is more important. When it comes to messaging, do you have document? <laughs> so I think Matt managed to finish typing first. So any examples of I'm glad we set up these better practices. So from my own experience, I can say 100% yes, because people don't email me anymore asking please put up this, you know, the the banner that, you know, the type of example, Now I'm not saying our sports center did this because they definitely didn't, but the type of thing is, uh, you know, the, the new treadmills in the gym type example that says, you know, I, I need to get this message out there. We know that people use that central portal a lot. So here's a great way of getting that information out. But here's the thing, like not everybody within this portal is using that. Not everybody is able to, um, uh, take advantage of the treadmills in the gym. Maybe they're a remote learner. Maybe they're, they're they're not a member there. So we know that those need to be targeted much better. One concrete example, actually, now that it, it comes to my mind, we were looking for. Um, so we're we're changing the default search engine in our open access labs. Uh, nothing. No no offense to Google if they're listening, because you know some of the products I really love. But we're changing it over to a company called Ecosia. I think they're out of Berlin. So it's. Every time someone runs a search, a tree's planted. So part of our sustainability drive, part of privacy drives, we're, we're changing that over. Now, a request was in to display within our portal, please let people know that this change is coming because it's the type of thing can, that you know can disturb people while they're going about their, their daily work. Um, but what we were able to say was this is this is not the best option for it because you know 90% of our users are not in those those labs and specifically not at the moment during the summer. So actually there's a message that's going far wider than it needs to. Instead, by targeting the people who are actually using that, we can say, no, that message is not going in there. And in fact, our agreement with governance is that that type of thing is not going in there. So it makes it easy for me as the manager of the portal to say no. So that's 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 really attractive to me. And it makes it easier and people understand that there is an appeals process. So they can go to internal communications and say, well, I think this is important enough for that. But actually there may be better and other routes that allow us to target specifically students, because they're the type of ones who are using those those labs, um, just a little bit better. Um, looking at the other questions there, when it comes to messaging, do you have documentation on what voice messages should be in, as in style of writing? Um, so we do have um, an editorial style guide. It's currently being updated, so I wouldn't point to it right at this moment. Our old one's still there, so our editorial style guide PDF. That's about how the whole website should be written, actually. So it should define the University of Edinburgh as we and the person reading it as you and, you know, the the, the case structure of all of our, our titles and that kind of thing. So, yes, we do. Um, it applies to the web and it does apply to the portal as well. But I wouldn't say it is by any means 100 percent adhered to. Um, and it's still not appropriate across all of our channels. So there's kind of an understanding there that people are going to be a little bit more informal in social media settings, as an example. So it's, it's trying to take account of those things. Um, but yes, we do have one. Um, I will add a link to it to the kind of the, the conference page, the, the Trisakai area, because uh, I don't know if I can do it right in this, this second. 
Um, I said, I did, that approved staff in communication and marketing can make those decisions. Yes, I'm guessing there are multiple approved staff. Is it clear who the actual person is during the crisis? So yeah, actually, we were able to lean on a, a process that they already had about crisis communications that just didn't involve the portal at that point. So actually, when there's an agreed crisis when it's raised by the business that there's there's a need for campus-wide messaging. Yes, there's a group of five, kind of group of five people that get together and decide how that is going to be communicated out. They then tell the individual nodes or resources like me what to do, get that message to this group of, of people. Um, so they do have an agreed process already for what for who who is able to do this in a crisis. And they're the kind of five people that are, you know, their their phone can ring at two in the morning if it's that bad. Um, the rest of us just are, are reactive to that. Um, so there's, yes, four or five people that are able to make that call. Yeah, so it's not just one person in that case, but because they're on a rota, it'll be one person at any one time. So instead of just, you know, a named person, it's the, the job role of the kind of crisis officer that's enabled to do it. We have a few minutes left. So if there are any other questions or Duncan, if you want to tell something more. Um, while I am talking, I will try and look up our, our style guide in case anyone wants to use it. So, I mean, uh, you'd be more than welcome to, to have a look. Uh, can I put in the bottom of the as I can? Um, so it's recently been updated. So if anyone wants to kind of lean on in any of that stuff, absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Oh, it goes in the shared notes. See, that's smart. That's 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 really smart. Thanks, Jim. If that was you. <laughs> um, if anyone wants to reach out after the fact, again, like my contact details are just on the the starting page of the slide. So you know, hit me up if there's anything I can I can add to this stuff or to show you in the portal. Just as a little advertisement, though, uh, I'm showing off our portal again in the lightning talks that are starting. I think at uh, quarter past three. Uh, so if anyone wants to see a little bit more of what's happening inside our portal, then you can do there very easily. Okay. If there are no any any questions left. Then, uh, Duncan, thank you very much. And you are very busy because you are in the lightning talks <laughs> just behind this one. And um, uh, for everyone, have a really nice uh, conference. And we see you back in the lightning talks. Thank you very much for hosting us, Inga.